Like forgot the applause. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to Quantum Leap Revisited, our weekly show where we discuss uh, Quantum Leap and uh, we're talking about the original, the classic series. Uh, I would mention that there's a newer series, but that series doesn't exist anymore, so you can only really enjoy the classic one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is good because that's really the only good one, too, in my opinion. But uh, as usual, I have this wonderful panel of people with me. Um, right here, I have Ro from the Scarif podcast, also known as Ro from the Scarif Scuttlebutt podcast. And then, in addition to that, he's known as uh, the co founder of the Red Five Network, uh, the co founder of the Red Five Network. That's an organization of other podcasters, uh, which they, they, listen they, to rose they do, they do what i tell them they, they do what you tell them that's the truth <laughs> <laughs> they listen to what Ro has to say and then immediately they execute his directives uh so that so that's that and uh he is the host of the of the that podcast that i said the scarif or scarif scuttlebutt podcast uh you can hear that on all major uh podcast platforms whether it's apple or uh all of them Yes, all of them. Sorry, uh, I got sidetracked for a second. Uh, wh what I was going to say was that uh, all of them. <laughs> I'm the best host. That's that's what I was going to say. <laughs> Very knowledgeable at everything. You're such an awesome guy. Through. I'm an awesome guy and an awesome host. So basically, you can listen to it on Apple, on Spotify, on Amazon, wherever there's podcasts. You'll see Rose podcast. He also has a YouTube channel, and uh, I also re recommend that one. That one is also the Scarif podcast, I believe. Uh, so as long as you know that, you can find him anywhere. Yeah. Uh, next, we have The Real Sean Crummel, who has the YouTube channel, The Real Sean Crummel. He also, uh, in addition to being an artist uh, that does videos uh, with drawing and uh, streams about pop culture and uh, old school comic book reviews, he also has designed his own series of stickers, which you can buy on Etsy online. Uh, it would be Etsy... Sean Crummel Art Etsy. Real Sean Crummel Art.etsy.com. And I, I actually put the link into the description because I seem seem to forget always how to say the link. So do but, I. But thankfully, Sean helped me out and helped me correct it. And finally, we have uh, Nick, uh, who uh, uh, had a very busy day and he came directly from work. I, he may still even be at work, <laughs> right? No, no, I'm at home. I just uh, for all we know, I, I I was like, oh wow, my day's gonna end early. Everything's good, and then someone was like, ah, I'm at the car wash, and I turned my car off, and that won't turn on, and I need you to come repair my ignition. So, uh, well, I, you should I hire a mechanic. That. I love that we get a little bit of a window in back and we have a, a whole new setting. It's really something unique and special. <laughs> Anyhow, we have Nick. Nick uh, is a unique guy. He's the minister at his local local church. He's also uh, the, the top locksmith in his town. He's also a consultant to the sheriff and the fire department when they need to uh, enter suspicious areas. And which he, he documents some interesting stuff, which you could see on his channel, Adventures in Locksmithing. And then he has a second channel where he talks about pop culture called uh, The Backyard Tardis. Both great channels. How's it going, Nick? It's going good. And i am uh, been looking forward to this. Uh, enjoyed this episode and uh, some of the cliches on it. And uh, there are some cliches. <laughs> yes. Uh it's interesting because I don't think uh, 
in some ways teen culture has stayed the same and others, I think it's kind of different now. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I also, um, we'll get to what year this is happening in, but I forgot to mention that Nick also has his own ranch and on his ranch, he raises goats, uh, and he's an expert in science fiction. So I, I usually say that and I forgot, but he really does raise goats, which it's interesting it's that he nice. manages to squeeze that into his schedule. Uh, but he somehow manages to do it. But yeah, this is an interesting episode. It's called Another Mother. It's the it's season two, episode thirteen. Uh, let's see. I, I have it here somewhere. Let's. I think I should start sharing. Uh, we got a lot of great people here, by the way. Uh, that a lot of people that we frequently see, whether it's Tex Rogers, Malachi D. Wildman, Ron Donna Farrow. Uh, Lisa Katrain's in here. Lisa Katrain is here. And uh, um, yeah. Everybody is commenting on how good you look, Nick. Yeah, uh, it's 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 not a, a new camera. It's just the fact that uh, it's light outside. So instead of this just being a black void, it's, it's providing. And I've got another window right here for the back doors of the van. So uh, we'll see how the, if, if they feel that way by the end of this when it starts getting dusk. But uh, the you know, it's uh, usually you're in a barn or something. I don't know what happened. Now there's light. Yeah. But for the last oh, couple of weeks, savings. my wife my <laughs> wife has been doing a, a class because she trains dogs, and she's been doing a class to uh, be able to scent train dogs to sniff stuff out. And uh, because of that, I've not been able to be on camera because I've been kind of double dutying where I've been watching the kid and doing this. But uh, back on camera. And that's interesting. I, my wife and I have been watching, um, real fast before we start, I've, my wife and I have been watching the uh, Max uh, series called uh, Contraband, uh, Caught at the Border. And when mm -hmm. they bring the dogs in, it's just amazing how strong, how fast they sniff out contraband. Even if it's crystal meth that's buried in coconut oil inside barrels, it's like amazing. Is that yeah, the it's, and it's is that whatever the they trained, whether it's to search for bodies right. or to search for, they even have dogs that smell cancer or smell mold in the wall, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Is that show a, a reality one or? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's just like a, you know, camera crew goes out and follows these guys. It's pretty good. And uh, um, today uh, there, there's something special about this episode. Yes, I did um, notice that. Finally, what we talk about here a lot, and I'm sorry that Script's not here because it's really something unique that's finally happened. There's the intro oh. <laughs> where instead of Sam narrating, it's somebody else narrating. However, this is an anomaly this episode because this is the only time you're going to hear the narration spoken by a man. And it sounds like the A team intro or totally something. Totally sounds I I <laughs> without even Googling, I, I have a feeling it's the guy from the A team or Knight Rider or both or whoever. It threw uh, me off. <laughs> Malachi yeah. uh, Malachi was dropping trivia before we started about that in the chat. I remember I recognize the actor's voice, and he's been in a lot of stuff in the 80s. He was uh he played a, an alien um in Battlestar Galactica but I remember him all over the place and, and he uh he would be good for a lot of shows he's just not good for this one this thing and and I have to give credit to the producers that they did they used this once they looked at it and they said okay we're getting somebody else uh and then uh oddly they got producer Deborah Pratt who and head writer or one of the head writers on the show uh, who is also the wife of uh, Donald Belisario, the creator of the show. So they, they got her to do the narration moving forward. And even then, there's a bunch of different tweaks with how they do it and how they edit it and the length of it and the wording of it. Uh, it it's not it's still not the final version of it, but this is already when, when they're starting to... It's another step. I feel like if the first season they're trying to figure out how this show is going to work, the second season they're starting to learn certain elements that are working for them and really start refining them. Uh, I think that in this episode, they also introduce, and we'll get to it shortly, they introduce even another thing into canon and lore here, which uh, becomes a thing 
moving forward. Actually, a few things happen here that, that I would say are uh, part of the canon moving forward. But we'll get to that. Uh, we start. He's got a problem in time, and if you can find them, maybe you can <laughs> hire Sam and Al. It's totally. It sounds like that. Oh yeah, they show the building too. I thought that was cool. That's the building that every '80s science fiction show shows. <laughs> it's in. Um, Probably it's right. In, it's in Battlestar Galactica. It's in um, all all of the Wonder Woman showed it. I think it's. I think it's a library in. It looks like a cool yeah. building. It looks like something something interesting would be happening in a building right. like this. It's like funny that that's their, their go-to building. Yeah, you see yeah. it. Buck Rogers. Yeah, I was in Buck Rogers. <clears throat> well, there's like, like a water treatment building my wife and I went to once, and it was in like uh, dead heat. It was in. It was like Star Trek, uh, uh, Starfleet Academy, and we see mm. it pop up in movies all the time, and we're like, that's wow. Funny. So here it has a brother and a sister fighting over a queen shirt, and Sam arrives and he realizes that he's a mommy. He's a mommy. And then the the music starts. That he would doesn't be say, terrifying. He he doesn't say um, oh boy though. Yeah, it would be terrifying, but he doesn't say oh boy yet. Uh, right. So that the, town totally looks like Poltergeist or ET. Right. Totally. 1981 in the valley. And then, uh, let's see, does it say the year, the thing? 1980. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was well, back what, with the car in the town. Does it say the location or it doesn't do that? I don't, I, don't, I guess. No. Uh, when they show the van, they're driving to Arizona. Arizona. So, yeah. interestingly, this was written by Deborah Pratt, but she didn't do the narration for the episode. I guess I have a feeling that after they heard the A team guy, <laughs> they just they just said I don't know how they came to the conclusion, but they're just like, can you just read it? Yeah. And and really that that was a stroke of genius. Uh, I think that she she narrates it in a very wonderful way. I think her narration is exactly what it what it's supposed to be. Yeah. It's a little and then uh, so so they're fighting. He, like now she's still trying. He's still trying to understand what what he needs to do. But there's also another element that yes. the, the kid. Uh, realizes that it's not really uh, the mother, and also the kid can apparently see Al, uh, which is another issue. And, and the kid who is the actual actress that is the kid? The kid, the actress is actually the daughter of uh, Donald Belisario and Deborah Pratt, Troy and Belisario, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. She's adorable. Yeah, no, she was good. Uh, but, you know, it's also nice to see what a kind of a family operation this thing was. Uh, these mm -hmm. days, when you think of Donald Belisario, you think of these kind of NCIS shows, which he collects checks on even at age 87, and they're very generic and bland. Uh, this is a show that I that I think that he really cared about. This isn't a, sure. this, this isn't a check collecting show. I think this was a show that he was really, really passionate about doing. And the fact that there is, I know that their marriage maybe didn't even survive this show, but this uh, husband and wife duo doing a lot of stuff, that it's a family engagement like this, uh, I think it adds to the show. I think I think that's why maybe, the, the not that's it's not the only reason, but it certainly adds something, I think. Yeah. Yeah, seeing uh, Sam carrying her around, it, it feels like a family operation, actually. Yeah. I Right, and she probably knows him already. The, she knows these actors. She's probably on set. You know, this is just just very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the scene here where they're talking to her is um, is so sweet. And yes. when um, when Sam tells Al, you know, don't lie to her, tell her the truth. It was just again getting back to the whole family operation situation. I think I think it really shows you a lot of what the writers were trying to do with the show i mean i think they succeeded because we're talking about it but i think it was really it was very well written the the fact that she said are you guys angels and you know it was just very really really sweet yeah it was really well done and uh it, it was it was the writing was good and also the execution was good and even this uh this shot here that she's trying to see if she can they show her that she can't really touch al and that's how they convince her 
Yeah. Well, she's like, are you an angel or, or angels? And he's like, yeah, here, trying to touch my hand. Then she goes through it. I love mm. that shot. It's very noticeable that it's an effect, but I, yeah. I thought yeah. it was adorable. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they do the best they can. Uh, it's 19 for 1989. These effects are the best that you can get. I mean, th there's not really a lot you can do in 1989. It is a network show, and all things considered, I don't mind. I understand uh, you. You could probably do it very easily today, make it look a hundred times better. But uh, I, I, I'm forgiving. I forgive the show, sure. even though the. I forgive the 30 some odd year show. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You, you know, and, well, and I also, sorry, go on. What, what were you going to say? I was just going to say, like, at the time, this isn't like right now, it kind of looks maybe a little cheesy because that's something any one of us could do with a green screen and the software readily available on our phones and stuff. But back then, this was not something that you could do that. So, uh, it, it's just one of those things that at the time it looked very impressive. Yeah. Sean, I bet you if he steps back, he'll disappear just like Al. On his green, yeah, in his green screen. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we have this green screen on our panel these days with the dad 30 years, yeah. whatever, 40 years ago. How many years is it? Oh, we're 20, 1990, I think I saw at the end of the credits. So. Yeah, 1990. And, and we can thank shows like this for pioneering it so that, uh, so that we it could eventually. The rest of it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's <laughs> Sean, all... Sean has a cloaking device. Yes. <laughs> I'll always take writing and, and uh, acting over, uh, you know, it's, it's not an, an effects driven show. Right. They have to do a few of those effects each time. They do the best they can. And, I, I am still okay with it. I, I'm willing. Like I said, I'm very forgiving. Uh, in any case, what what they learn the here panel, is Kirk. <laughs> what they they learn here is is that uh, oh yeah the sun disappears, uh, and uh, Sam has to stop that from happening. But uh, and now you see like the guys in the van. This is very much like an, a cliche. But come on, how, it, it, it works. It does whatever it's supposed to do. You see the van, you know exactly what it is. The, the uh, windows on it are windows, comically, yeah. comically black. I was like, and that is not legal tinting. Is They're not targeting him. They're not even targeting, but like, there were like really little kids at the bus stop and they were like, oh, we're going to get him. And then, like, a mom pulls up and, I, oh, okay. And Their disappointment like, just, cracked me up. Yeah. They, they just want kids. <laughs> they don't care what kind, what type. It's like, right, but that, we that's just want weird. little kids. It, it's weird, yeah, because he's not really the, the prime candidate. He's actually a 16-year-old kid. Is it really what they're looking for? Again, not, yeah. not, not my business. I'm just saying that... Uh, it's just kind of weird. You'd think that they were trying to ca kidnap kids. He probably wouldn't be the 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 best. But at the same time, what do I know? They they kidnap kids. They supposedly kill them. Uh, I guess you know it is what it is. Yeah. Human, Human trafficking. Anybody with expertise in that on the panel? You're the one in the you're the one in the van, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> I like that, the, that it looks like you're sitting in that van currently. <laughs> Especially in like older, oh, no, older these guys don't have this kind of taste window. in podcasts. They, right. they, they, they don't right. they don't like Star Trek and Doctor Who. Their uh, their van isn't well decorated like yours, Nick. <laughs> in any case, uh what was I gonna say? Hey Ishmael, how's it going? Um, so we're back with the van. This, this is just so funny. Like if they were really those people, they couldn't have been in a more suspicious vehicle on earth right, yeah. than this thing. I mean, especially you think... with that front window, it's just black. <laughs> right. I mean, generally speaking, I, again, this is a dark subject matter, but if I assume that if you're criminals of, uh, of the, of this type, uh, I feel like you would try to pass yourself off as key, as if you're just a regular person. Uh, this this vehicle, anybody that's a policeman or anybody that sees this vehicle, it's the probable biggest, cause. It, it is it is the biggest red flag. They they get stopped in a second. 
can't but, even read that license plate. It's so dirty. Right. right. Yeah. There's no li- license plate. The windows are black, and it's a it's it's a literal brown van that's dirty and and kind of the it's fishy. It's not even like it looks like it just came out of the factory. There, it couldn't be more fishy than this, really. Like at least slap like a a window washing decal on the side to try and throw people off the right. Side so something way. like a, a, a exterminator, pest or control, anything. Dog just, groomer. Anything, at least the pest child control. abductor. If, if it was pest control, <laughs> even if it looked, <laughs> if, if it was pest control, you'd somehow even say, Oh, that's why the van looks so crappy. Because uh, somehow in your mind, pest control, you're like, eh, you know, chemical. maybe maybe you'd let it slide, but not yeah. to even put a sticker, not even to put anything. Yeah, yeah. lazy, lazy, lazy criminals. Plot then, hole, plot, plot hole, and then suspicious, <laughs> and then, uh. Ro, what did you think of this shot that he's uh, looking in the mirror? Oh yeah, it's uh, it's it's well done. It was quick. I I think all the shots of Sam and uh, the mom are are seem to be done quickly. And there's one shot where is this the one where he, where she's talking in Sam's voice? Yes, I think I think it was. Yeah, that that was done pretty well. Right. Very believable as a mom. And they and got the, they got a perfect actress for that. And then this is the part that Sam says, listen, this lady has such a schedule. I can't just follow the kid. Why don't you you and Gushy uh, zero in on him and uh, I'll stay here, which which is uh, interesting. And the other thing is that they mention Gushy again. Uh, mm-hmm. They'll mes- mention him throughout the show. But it's it's one of the things that, y- you know, more and more you hear about him. Actually, in, in the first episode, you see Gushy. But yeah. th- then in future times, there's just kind of, they they mention him in passing. Little guy, bad breath. Right, right. They do mention that from time to time, and then uh, this lady shows up. Oh, this this effect um, was a little off because if you can see the actress in the door when the light comes up, she shifts. So they they no <laughs> plot hole. <laughs> Why? Where does she? Sh- oh yeah, I see what you mean. Go back before she, before he uh, leaves, and then just play it. Okay. You you won't get flagged. Yeah, uh, you never know. You never know. <laughs> that is such a green outfit. I yeah. love it. I'm gonna. And do I, think, little... I don't know if it's St. Patrick's Day or if he's uh. And and again, he only wears one outfit in this whole riddler. episode. <laughs> yeah. The little girl comments on it, and he's like, "This is cutting edge," and she's <laughs> like, "I don't like it." Okay. <laughs> Uh, I have to stop for a second because I we do get flagged for stuff like this. Do you? Yes. Even without audio. Yes. What What were you going to say, Ro? What What is it that we're supposed to be looking at? Uh, frame advance. So the actor stops to let the effect go and then let Al leave, and then just frame advance it for. Ah, I saw it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw it. You're yeah. right. So what but, they do? They they told her to hold still. They, yeah, they, they told her to hold still, and then out. he left, and then they kept rolling. But either either she moved or the camera moved that made it. It uh, looks like she moved. Actually, yeah. Scott Bakula was pretty stable. Uh, yeah, will fire her ass right out of this. Amateurs. Ship. Well, she she had she had three words to say, uh, yeah. and it wasn't like they they brought Meryl Streep for this role. Nothing personal. <laughs> I don't know who this actress is, but I think that. The, the, that's the best they could have got. That's the best performance they could have gotten, right? With her. Yeah, sure. Uh, now yeah. they're at school, and this is uh, interesting. He's sitting here with his friends, and there's some woman that kind of, you know, she's a girl that people like, and all that stuff. And this is a part that it's kind of like instead of Dungeons and Dragons, they call it like Demons and Dragons or something like that. But I, I swear I, he said the he said it, and they overdubbed it. Or, or oh, you know what? That could be. Hard. Yeah, they that could be. Uh, I noticed they did that later on, and we'll get to it later, where they where you can see that somebody says something different, and then they overdub it, and then like a few seconds later, I realized why they did it. But it, it could be that they said Dungeons and Dragons, and then the who owns Dungeons and Dragons? Right now, it's uh, uh, Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro. Yeah, so, so maybe they somebody might, had they might, beef. Somebody right. had an issue, so they said, "Oh, demons and wizard, or whatever." Right, right. Yeah, yeah. 
this whole scene was a little confusing to me because I didn't know what the hell they were talking about. But I liked Al. He's like, oh, God, these demon and dragon kids. Yeah. I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> and it could be that uh, Dungeons and Dragons said, you know what? Uh, if you're calling them Dungeons and Dragons kids, you're putting them in the in a bad light. And we don't really want to. Oh, yeah. Right. I mean, they tried to yeah. they almost got him uh, killed, you know, and they do the whole thing where they're fooling him with the thing. Yeah. So it, it sort of it puts it's as if like the, the kids that are the bad, uh, the bad crowd likes D and D. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, also, uh, I don't remember much <laughs> in 81 cause I was just born. But my brothers <laughs> had some D and D stuff. So I don't know if the satanic panic nonsense was still kind of having an effect. So maybe they didn't even want to, yeah, I mean, but, but they, I think if that was the reason, they wouldn't change it to demons. <laughs> right, exactly. Right. Th this looks, uh, yeah. This absolutely looked like, when I saw it, I didn't actually look at the mouth. I, I was kind of doing a, a bunch of different things, and I was kind of looking at it. Maybe I should have zeroed in on it more, but I said to myself, it's weird that they didn't just say Dungeons and Dragons. In my mind, I said, it looks like that's what they wanted to say, but they called it something else. So yeah. I, I came to the same conclusion, maybe it's a rights issue or something like that, but I didn't actually realized that maybe they initially used it and then they changed it yeah, yeah I, even, I, I just i didn't look too hard i just rewound it or rewound it like once i, or, I wonder but. if there was if the original airing of the episode actually had a dungeons and dragons and then they had to change it or was it always mm. uh oh, yeah. demons and dragons it's really interesting yeah I'm something that i kind of thought rogers was... doesn't know <laughs> <laughs> something i found kind of like funny looking at last week's episode versus this week um, so last week when you had like the college jocks, their initiation thing was about stealing something. But mm. here, what is the Dungeon and Dragons high school cruise thing? Well, uh, your initiation, you got to go hook up with this girl <laughs> that yeah, apparently to, to everybody get, does. To get points, right? To get points, yeah. 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 So now they're back here. Uh, I think he tells uh, Sam that it's a matter. There's some woman. There's some girl, and and then uh, he's got to he, teach, or he's got to teach the son how to deal with women, and he's embarrassed about it. Doesn't want right. To. And then Sam is like, "I'm not going to teach you this kid how to have intercourse with a girl." He's only 15, and I was like, "Oh, when I was 15." <laughs> yeah, yeah. He goes, "I don't want to know." <laughs> oh, and then he was like, "Oh, hey, what did he call him?" He's like, "You're, <laughs> you were a practicing pervert at five. Right. And, and I think that the girl <laughs> keeps hearing like words that she's not supposed to be hearing, and she keeps yeah. repeating, "What's the sexual the intercourse?" Yeah, like, <laughs> she says, "What's secular undercourse?" Mm. Right. <laughs> I actually wrote that down. Ah. <laughs> the brown van. <laughs> this is the funniest thing. It's like a ticking clock, man, because they already know that the kid is going to get uh, right. abducted and then they're going to find his bloody clothes and nothing else. Right. I mean, they know it. And really, it's well done. It's not, sometimes, even if you go for the cliche or whatever it is, uh, sometimes that's effective. Plus, we have to take into consideration that in 1989, 1990, this cliche was actually. Uh, it was not as of it was probably a cliche even then, but today it's even a bigger joke in, in the sense of how much of a cliche it is. Right. I think that then maybe maybe people were still doing it and it wasn't as obvious. I uh, the the murder van, you mean? The murder van, yeah. I and think I think that's just how we perceived the world is uh, growing up in that decade or whatever. You had yeah, I, saying, don't, even don't even yeah, even in the seventies, I think too. But I think it's a cliche that that really works in this episode because obviously we you know when we get later when we get to the part later on, um, what everyone fears you know happens up until the rescue. But I think it really sets up a a uh, very suspenseful situation as the episode starts to kind of wind down and you see the I guess the the pinnacle of the drama later on. And it's coupled by a really great uh, piece of music. Um, I was I was on the edge of my seat, kind of like, you know, watching the chase and and et cetera, et cetera, all the stuff that was happening later on. Yeah, yeah, totally. It, it worked. It totally worked. 
Yeah, I mean, I guess I guess what I'm saying is sometimes you have th- things and you're like, oh, this is so obvious and it's so this and it's so that. But sometimes these kind of classic elements uh, that maybe you've seen throughout your whole life and things, they work. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. you, you know, in in our day and age, and and I won't I won't mention the new show that doesn't even exist anymore. But I'll, I'll say in general, new shows is that I think that a lot of times people are so sometimes they just hire people that don't know how to write anything or don't know how to write stories, and other times uh, they write people that are, they think to themselves, oh, I have to keep subverting expectations. I have to do this. I have to do that. And the truth is, sometimes these classic elements they work, like you said, Ro. You see this. The, the suspense is building up. You see this car every time, even though it's the simplest thing, just this dirty van driving, and you're like, oh no! Every time you see it, it wor- it yeah. does what it's supposed to do. You believe it. Things don't become cliches because they don't work as narrative devices. They just get overused. Right. Maybe and maybe if they that's were driving the issue. around in a Toyota Celica, they wouldn't that we wouldn't take them seriously. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh so okay. Uh next, but I want to say that Tex Rogers did answer about D and D. I don't know, but I think it was always this way. Surely they would have checked before using it. We don't know. It's something interesting. I feel like nobody's ever mentioned it before. This is the first time anybody's ever talked about it. Ever. ever. We are in smart. The, in the There's, history of, of, of the world. This has never time. been a Quantum Leap review series ever on YouTube. This is it. Even if even if there has been, I'm sure that they didn't talk about this. They, they just <laughs> they didn't have what it takes. I think we're the first. Come on. I think we're the first. We kind of we're nitpicky. We pay attention to these weird things. I feel like I feel like we're <laughs> yes. the first. Yes. I got suggested a quantum leap like channel and I was like, get this out of here. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> oh, well, Tex Rogers has a really good idea. You should change the name of the series to the uh, real uh, quantum uh, leap review <laughs> series. That's awesome. Yeah. And then put TM after it. <laughs> So uh, that's a good idea, Tex. So next, uh, he, he's driving him home or whatever it is. Uh, he brought the driving the, the daughter, but she keeps calling him Sam, and she knows that it's him. But somehow the other guys don't really yeah, know. No, yeah, him. right. Nobody have, nobody notices. I oh, mean, he goes, notices. Yeah, he notices weird one. phases. Right. Yeah, I guess. And th- and <laughs> then here. Like here they're yeah. playing ping pong uh and sort of and sam's trying about, to yeah trying, trying to be to kind of like a father figure but he's the mother and it's not working because he wants to learn about the kid and his uh woman stuff but the kid's like i'm not going to talk to you you're my mom right mm-hmm. yeah which makes sense i i understand exactly why he's saying that and then there's uh the reflection mm-hmm. was this a good reflection row yeah I like that shot. Simple. And I think it, it's a nice touch because it's him reminding himself. Right. Oh yeah, I'm the mom. The, right, he doesn't mom. want to open up to me. Right. But I love I love this when the little girl comes in because this is the kind of stuff like like when we've been recording and I've been in one bedroom with the camera off and stuff, and all of a sudden I'll be like I don't hear the TV <laughs> in the other room anymore. <laughs> yeah. And She'll check. decide that like she's making dog food soup or something, you know. And <laughs> she's just, what are you doing? What what Ooh, would possess yeah. you to do this? Well, cue the reference, uh, Ro. Oh yeah. So it, I mean, even before this, this is the, this is going to be the second Star Wars reference because the dog's name is Wookie, oh, and okay. uh, the first Star Wars reference was probably fifteen minutes ago in the episode where the son. Uh, turns around to the to the mom uh, Sam and and starts talking like Yoda. Oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. Almost forgot about that. Yeah, so it's nice there were a few Star Star Wars episodes. There were a few Star Wars references in one episode. And there's uh there's gonna be another Lucasfilm product reference uh, later on. We'll get to it. <laughs> the van. This is the funny part. I mean, it's not You're right. Supposed to be- Listen, it, it, the subject. I want to clarify: the subject matter is not funny, right, right, exactly. but in the context of us just analyzing <laughs> a show that's twenty plus years old, right? Exactly, the, 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 the thirty something, I think, years old. Actually, at this point, they're just so smiley for 
like, like uh, you just expect the kidnappers yes. to be like Rrr. you just <laughs> you like, just needed needed to have them have like uh mustaches and to have them twirl them yeah. Look you at know those what? eyebrows that brow ridge he's yeah. all like, yeah. you know i think it would have been more powerful if we never saw the kidnappers and only saw them in either silhouette shadow um like i would have liked to have seen this this shot where the windows are still rolled up and the camera just kind of does a, a a slow you know dolly in to to the front area of the of the uh of the van and you can assume that whoever's driving that van is kind of like looking and peering at the kids but we never see them i think that would have been a little bit more creepy and powerful i that agree a with classy, you classy classy spielbergian Hitchcock there you go shot. i agree with you right. that would have been feel like they feel like they're from the set of a dukes of hazard episode <laughs> <laughs> transplanted they yeah feel more like a dukes of hazard villain <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, they do. Mm. They show some Magnum stuff early. Uh, later, oh yeah, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, how... and, and Sam spoils it too for the girl. Says, you know what? That show's going to be on for the next eight years, so don't worry about it. Yeah. So right now they're basically setting up. Oh, there it is. They're setting up their friend. This is a uh, Magnum. They're supposed to pull a practical joke on him, right? Her. Yeah. But I don't, I never really understood like the context. Like she's supposed to act like she's going to have sex with him and then they'll jump out. I, th I think that the main thing they wanted is, is that he admits that he's a virgin or and... just embarrass him, like in the middle of it. Uh, that's mm -hmm. one thing. Yeah, he, I yeah. think it was the admitting he was a virgin. Admitting that he yeah. was a virgin, that's what they wanted to get out of him and him admitting it and then popping out and making fun of him. Uh, that was their big joke. Uh, you know, it feels very kind of childish and stupid, but it's not like things like that have never happened. Right. It, th that that uh, actually makes more sense than the brown van guys. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning, I mean, they make sense too because there are people like that, unfortunately, in this world. But I'm saying that uh, the behavior the here only... seem, seemed more logical than the behavior of those guys. The only thing that didn't make sense to me was given the time and stuff like she what her motivation was because he was going to be able to secure her um it had something to do with like like a dance or he's the class president and if she oh, goes class with president, him yeah. she automatically becomes queen or something king and yes. queen something i missed like that. that part that that's the thing yeah. you're right i was it's, doing some things that was her that was her payment they're like, like her the, reward the for D &D helping out no reward for helping out. Who, who, would, who would have given her the favor? Who would have taken care of her? The guys would have made her like queen, like prom queen or whatever the, uh, the, the okay. thing was. It's like hula or something, luau dance or whatever, and she'd be like queen of the the luau or something. So, but they offered her. In any case, they came with an incentive. They they it was an incentive program. Right. <laughs> yes. Uh, in any case, Sam is. Uh, is holding the kid and then he's you know he understands this kid this guy wants to go out he said nope you're not going anywhere what, you're what staying is this, here uh, the the team that we're following what is he from everything uh, yeah i've seen him like, all over the place. yeah even the daughter is is in a lot of stuff the daughter yeah. was in like charles in charge and stuff this guy's been working for decades as, yeah. as like a character actor He's and still, I felt like he's he still, was perfect for this role. He's yeah, still yeah. Playing yeah, he's a, great. He's still playing a teenager today. Oh, Blossom. Yeah. Uh, Malachi, Malachi says Blossom. Was he the brother in that? Oh, okay. Yeah. And know. this because is uh, this is where we get the the third Lucasfilm reference. Uh, he wants to go out with his buddies to go see uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Again. They got to get there before the big yeah. ball rolls, or rolls big down rock. the hill. Yeah. Right. And then... Uh, I, I just wanted to take a moment to point out that like he has this perfect vibe of he looks a little awkward he looks a little geeky you know knows but he doesn't he doesn't look uh ugly or pimply so he's he's that right perfect kind of the girls might like him but he's right. awkward enough to not have the guts to go up to the girls yeah he's out of place but, but not really right, right right yeah he's a nice kid 
so, it, so in my head, sorry, real quick, uh, I kept laughing bec- at how blacked out the windows were and how oh, slow God. the van had to move so they didn't accidentally kill someone. <laughs> not not right. con- not conspicuous at all. Yeah. No, not at all. <laughs> Nobody would think there was anything weird about this van if it was riding through their neighborhood that has four cars in it. Right. And uh, But the fact that he went out the window, I mean, I think that Sam should have picked up on this, but what do I know? Well, he did have the stereo on, so Sam, you know, he did later on say that uh, that he thought he was still up there because the stereo or something. You so gotta that, mention how how sweet it is that Al is getting attached to this little girl. Yes, yeah, and I've been such a such a a scoundrel. Yeah, the fact that he's like, you know, I never considered having kids, but after seeing her, it's like Sam, you're or Al, you're a big sweetheart. And I have a little um, unofficial headcanon cameo connection for, you know, how we usually see uh, famous people in, in these shows that are not famous yet. So when we get to mm-hmm. it, towards the end of the episode, I'll, I'll, let, you, I'll, I'll uh, let you guys know what I found out. The Dukes of Hazard guys? No, the, the little girl, Teresa. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, what uh, Sean was talking about as far as... Uh, getting connected with her see they, they came to make fun of him they're like oh you're this and he gets upset and he drives away i um because al pops in there for a moment doesn't he in the bedroom there i or, mean no that was earlier when she no. was talking to the boys right There's a part where al's there and they're all talking and joking and al's like and you're still a virgin. Oh, yeah, and you'll the, be a virgin oh, yeah until... that's right. Yeah, yeah. That was, that. And, and shirt. that was one of the things that I, I remember from school. A lot of guys talking big game. Mm-hmm. And then right. when I got married and was an adult and stuff like that, there was like just one day all of a sudden it hit me. I was like, they had no idea what they were talking about. Right. Like none of the yeah. stuff that they were saying was realistic. They were just telling stories based off of stuff they read in in magazines high school taught me nothing else except that 95 percent of people are full of crap that's true (laughs) and again you know not being totally unrealistic about the embarrassment that kids go through i mean i i remember in eighth grade um a couple of my so-called friends um during a graduation party, they de pantsed me, and I I was like horrified. You really? Know? Yeah. Bastards. They're all dead now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lisa could try and ask, asked uh, how would uh, Ziggy know that the kid is a virgin? It's a good question. Even as a, as a kid watching this episode, I think I wondered the same thing, but. I used to have a note that just lived on here with, uh, for what they described Ziggy as being. like They had like a fancy techno babble term for him being a supercomputer, and that would be my excuse. <laughs> He's just like we'll a see. hyper-duper, burp-a-derper super. Are, are they bringing in like Ziggy lore little by little? I, I, I kind of just attribute it to that. Like, they're just bringing in new... I mean, you, know, you kind of just abilities. go with the flow. It was a funny yeah. thing for him to say, and I, I didn't overthink it. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know how Ziggy would know that, but unless he went to a psychiatrist, the psychiatrist entered it into a computer, and mm. Ziggy intercepted that uh, data. If, if somebody forced me to give him an explanation... Sure. That, that would have support this headcanon. I absolutely want to understand. <laughs> well... And and here's 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 another possibility because this is they're from the future, right? So uh, you know uh, he went to therapy. That in the boy future, got the Elon that. Musk chip in the brain, and Ooh. so all his memories were downloaded. And no, I, I I'm gonna go with he in the future. He is a mess. He goes to therapy. Somebody writes it down, answers it into a computer, and Ziggy has the data. I'll go with that one. It, it's it's <laughs> not nice to say that, but uh, it's a top secret government facility. I figure they could probably pull that off. They've been listening since the '60s to all of us. Well, now now they're in the car. They're follow. They're you know they found the bike. They're driving, trying to find the van, and here it is. And there then, are some good shots of them in, in shadow that I, I. So when you said row, like they should yeah. have never shown them, I'm like yes. 
You know, this is uh, this is the the chase scene that I was uh, just chomping at the bit. I the music went very well. The the action, the the pacing of the scene, yeah, it was good. Was really good, and I was like, you know, I was at the edge of my seat just watching this. This was very good for its time. I think that it's still even now it it achieves the effect that it needed to achieve. Uh, this is an interesting part. Uh, basically, I don't know if this happens before. But when this show started, they didn't imply that Sam knows how to fight. I don't think that they implied that initially. There's something that he boxes, but I don't think they implied that he knew it. Now, uh, Alice basically tells him, oh, you knew, you know Taekwondo. Of course you can get rid of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I'm asking you guys, because for me, I know moving forward, th this isn't the first and only time they'll use the fact that Sam can fight. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember anybody ever mentioning it prior in the way that it, they did here. Mm -mm. Well, he he's had a good red right and... hook. But oh, yeah, yeah. He, he's never fought like this. And every other time he's fought, he has fought more like a brawler. Can I? But... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, it's it's a separate thought. Go ahead, finish your thought. I got one, but too. I was just thinking, in this situation, you know, he's in a woman's body. And... So he's he's at a bit more of a disadvantage to just overpowering him with a brute force brawl type tactic. Ron Donaferro says the boxing episode. Uh, he thinks that that's where they mention it. Uh, they mention it, but they don't mention that he knows Kung Fu or whatever he was supposed to. He's like, oh, you know, Taekwondo. Like, I don't remember what Al tells him here. This is the first yeah, time I think I, I think in the show, this is the first time that they make it. They imply that Sam not just boxing, but actually knows how to fight. I think that this is uh, the first time I remember it on the show. And it's yeah, interesting right. because it's not the last time this is this this episode established the kids seeing Al and Sam and whatever it is. It established the him fighting, that he knows some fighting that he they didn't mention earlier. And it has the early narration there, uh, which they they start suddenly did that, which they hadn't done it before. So a lot of firsts in this episode. Yeah, there's a joke where Al's like, you know, Taekwondo, oh, 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 because he's in the middle of the fight. That's funny. Can I, I wanted to point something out too. Um, <clears throat> Sean earlier talked about uh, dialogue replacement. There's another scene <clears throat> where they're, Al and Sam are chasing the van uh, a couple minutes before. And Al, you can see because his lips are, are you know, you, you can see it, the, the sentence says that uh ziggy says that they're in no he says that it seems like they're in a vehicle but he actually says van because his lips say mm. and that and then i'm i thought it was weird i'm like why would they replace that because he is in a van and then a few seconds later um they cut away and they do the scene and then they go back to him and he said and then al says oh ziggy you know he's doing his uh ziggy device and he says ziggy says that they're in a van so I guess it would it would not have made sense if Al said that they were in a van before Ziggy told him they were they were in a van. So I guess that's why they did the dialogue replacement because they recorded van, but they couldn't have Al say van because later on Ziggy tells him that it's a, an actual van. So I just thought it was interesting. That's if interesting. You know, I didn't notice any of this. If you, I I need you guys to uh, it, tell me it. Whenever he show he Sam she shows up, and they 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 get the best of him, and then they rip open the shirt. I found that so amusing because it's just Sam's hairy chest. But right. I, I guess I've seen so many like horror and uh, thriller movies where it'd be like they rip open the shirt and the woman's naked. But the fact that it's just Sam's hairy chest cracks me up. I find it very amusing. The the and they look at it like of... it's not Sam's hairy chest. I know, know? I mean, right? I find but it, that, and you know what's funny too? That thing's so amusing. Yeah, and when the when the son gets rescued, I mean, she goes in, and and Sam still has her his chest open. Like, what is the son? Right. I mean, doesn't the son, the son be like, that his mom, mom, like mom is, uh, yeah. cover up, mom? I yeah, that, that was more <laughs> Sam, Sam yeah. wasn't wearing a bra. But by the way, there's a few things. First of all, uh, Price of Reason Live, you're right. Wiki says this is the first time Sam's martial arts knowledge is revealed. That's true. And we have a person that I, I think is new, 
uh, Minister Kenneth Thomas Espinoza. I hope Quantum Leap comes as a movie. The original Dr. Sam Beckett, not the reboot. Uh, not the reboot was not good. Uh, yes, we don't like the reboot here either. And welcome. Uh, really nice to have you here. We have a minister on our panel. So this is the first time that we've had a minister on our panel and in the chat. So See, we're, welcome. We're, we're full of firsts. This full show. of firsts. Full of firsts. And uh, you're in good company. We all like this show. Uh, welcome. I think the kid was uh, dealing with enough trauma that if if his mom just came, like, beat the crap out of people and came in ruffled up, he wouldn't think anything of it. And, and I like uh, I like the the excuse, like when when the son goes, "Mom, how'd you do all this?" And Sam goes, um, "Girl, Girl Scouts." Scouts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was a good line. <laughs> So, but back... you know, what's interesting Sorry, is like these guys were like super, super into going, going after her. And they're like, oh, this is going to be, fun. but it's like, yeah. okay, what kind of pervert are you? Right. Are you, you a kid pervert dollars? or are you a mom pervert? <laughs> Equal opportunity. <laughs> right. it, uh, Al has a, Al has a line in it where he's like, look out, Sam, he's got a knife. It might be sharp. It might be sharp. And yeah. No, it's like, like this big. I think it might be sharp. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> so, um, so basically, they're now at the breakfast, the you know table, the day next day, whatever it is. Now, though, even though Sam's the mother, he has a, a conversation with the kid, and the kid actually does share this information, even though Sam is the mother, and he's like, ah, you know, don't worry about it. People do whatever they do in their own time. You know, don't worry, it's all good. Kind it's of very PSA. Very PSA, very comforts him on all the stuff with his kids, with the other kids making fun of him. Uh, they bond. And then at this point, he goes to school. And uh, what happens is that at the end, the girl actually likes him. And mm -hmm. uh, when the guys are like, oh, like he does, he's a virgin or whatever he's it Mister, is. What is it, Captain Virgin or Mr. Virgin? Right. She's like, oh, what are you talking about? <laughs> he goes, and, are you kidding? And then they start doing each other on the table there. Right. And then that's it. The, the, they're convinced now. Uh, <laughs> right. oh, and now no, they're like, not. we're going to have to make him a wizard in D&D. <laughs> the not D&D, whatever it is, the <laughs> fake D&D. &D. Uh, and then this is a nice part where you see him back at home. Uh, Al is really, you know, connected with a girl. He's teaching her, showing her dinosaurs and stuff. It's actually like you said, is best to source. It's it's a really nice yes. scene. Yeah. So this is where I wanted to talk a little bit about um, a couple of things that this episode did. The the Al disappearing. They added some new effects. There's a little bit of a sparkly effect that they added mm -hmm. to pop him in. Mm -hmm. um, I've we I don't think we've ever seen uh, the uh, the Ziggy device project anything in midair. No. So I think no, that's new. Have... We haven't seen it, and it's not something that happens a lot. So it's not. It, it's interesting that they use it. It was something different. Yeah, and regarding um, having ca like cameos of famous people when they realize that they're not famous, um, I made. This is not official. This is something that I looked up, which is my head canon. But this little girl in the show is her name is Teresa. And she is uh, loving these dinosaurs and stuff like that. So I think there there is a long line of famous or maybe not so famous uh, female paleontologists that are named Teresa, like Teresa Marianska, Teresa Manera, Teresa Ryan, and Teresa Miller. All of them are uh, uh, paleontologists that I found online that in my head canon, she might be one of them <laughs> because of uh, because of Al. Or, or yeah, maybe the the paleontologist you saw they uh, grew up watching this show and then they saw her playing True. with the dinosaurs and they wanted yeah. to do that too. And they all changed their names. <laughs> they all they all changed their name to Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> That's in our ad, ad canon for sure. Yeah. I was uh, really glad that they gave him gave both of them time to say goodbye to her. Like mm -hmm. Sam's like, oh, I can feel it; it's coming. Right. And then, yeah. And uh, Al promises to come see her again. Marks somehow. for seven is asking, is this before Pool Hall Blues? Yes, it is. It's before uh, Blue Hall, whatever you just said, Pool Hall Blues. Blue uh, Hall Pools. Blue, blue, <laughs> ha, blue Ball. 
<laughs> blue ball pools. <laughs> Sorry, ministers. Blue ball pools. <laughs> in any, Nick, in Nicholas any, is not amused. I feel like all the ministers are going to abandon ship. Uh, in any case, uh, yes. Oh, Tex has a good point, too. A good question, because that's a question I had in my mind. Is is uh, is this another first that Sam could feel the leap coming? I don't know because when he was in the uh, the cemetery, no in that, yeah, exactly. When uh, when he's trying to reunite that daughter with the father, and that they lost uh -huh. the son, right? Uh, he he's like uh, now, Sam, and he's like no, not yet, and then he's like now, wow. Mm. So I feel like they alluded to it. Yeah. It, it did feel a little off, though, just how far in advance he knew. Yeah, but I, I let it slide because yeah, they is, really did need to wrap up with yeah. her. Plus, this is I this is Belisario's how... daughter, so they needed yeah, to Yeah, they also they, yeah, they needed, they needed to play nice here. There's, there was some politics here. The girl has to get a nice send-off. It's the daughter of the creator and mm -hmm. the the daughter of the uh, one of the top producers and main writers of the show. They were obviously going to make it so that she has a magical uh, departure from here. Also, it was directed by Sam Joseph always... L. Scallon. Because we didn't mention that earlier. Oh, we didn't mention that text. It was the, directed by Joseph L. Scallon, who's known for directing this episode. And TNG episodes, at least one. Oh, and TNG. Oh, so, yeah, good, good, uh, good track record. Sorry, and Nick, it... didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, I was just going to say, like, he always um, leaps into the worst. Like, he didn't leap in when they were, like, planning the play. Oh, yeah. So, like, they're they're going to, you know, they're gonna everyone's going to break, his... they're going to go, and he has no, no idea, idea what he's supposed to be doing on this field. Well, he's got a quarterback helmet, so. Well, I know, and but. And a like, lot of angry faces. What's the play? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You just run it at that point. <laughs> And uh, that, that's it. He's he he's the quarterback. Uh, it, yeah, this is kind of like the play, kind of like he's just here. He doesn't know what he needs to do, and it's uh, rather amusing. It ends, and, and you now get an oh boy, he did an oh boy. Mm -hmm. So they're starting to to kind of pick up on the oh boy thing. Uh, I really feel that this this is the season, and especially over the next few episodes, they really managed to find that formula. Uh, they're going to be tweaking the narration. They're going to be tweaking. There maybe there will be more stability in the old boy, but I feel like this is already the part where, if until now they were trying to figure out what exactly this show is going to be, now they're already just sort of locking in certain things and really fine tuning things uh, to a level that they want, mm -hmm. and we're witnessing it in real time. Is this uh so here this is another example of the extended credit scenes. I don't remember like you know uh um, Yeah, now, the now they're playing around with this too. Then I yeah. around with it too. So you guys mentioned that when I wasn't here and uh they had done it in the previous episode, the uh Man of La Mancha Portrait of Troyan the the murder mystery that was kind yes. of lame. Uh, they did it on that. That's how I knew that I missed the beginning of the episode because I didn't see any of uh, what they showed it in during the end credits. I, I I have to say that Nick's window has become dark. Uh, it was light before. Now it's dark. It kind of reminds me of the windows <laughs> in the van in the, in the creepy right. van. No, it's dark it's very meta. Now. Yeah. Very meta stream. <laughs> sorry I, I couldn't help myself i had to say it sorry nick go on sean well that was it uh, that's they they did it in in that episode then they, uh and i've seen it consistently since you know i agree with you that's another thing that they add that towards the end and now uh let's let's just go one by one and discuss uh, how we felt about the episode ro how did you feel about this episode well after last week's dismal episode i oh. really I really enjoyed <laughs> I really enjoyed this one. The it was exciting. It was uh, uh, almost I mean, I know there was a lot of stuff that was happening uh, that was uh, very serious, uh, like kidnapping and all that stuff. But it was it was delightfully family friendly. And um, like I said, just exciting, nail biting towards the end. Um, 
the the last time Sam jumped into a female, um, I I remember not really liking um, the way he was handling that character. Um, and then when when I realized that he was going to be jumping into a female again, I'm like, ah, I hope he I hope it doesn't suck as much as that last time. But it it was great. It was wonderful to see him kind of relate to to this kid too, trying to help him out. Um, but also to see the struggle that he had because, you know, he was his mom instead of his dad. And I like, you know, what Sean said um, regarding looking at himself in the mirror and realizing and reminding himself that, yeah, it must be a little weird for him to be talking to me about this subject matter. So um, I think um, I, I really enjoyed this episode. There's a lot of uh, great things. And I Again, for somebody that has never seen this show when it first aired, you know, these uh, this series is is the first for me. I'm um, I'm highly interested in, and and uh, surprised at all the changes that have been happening so far, not only with story, but with some of the uh, the mechanical aspects of the show, like the special effects and and the, the the cutting of of the extra stuff at the end and stuff like that i'm i'm enjoying seeing that transition from what you guys have said oh we still don't know we still haven't seen like the 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 open that we're used to where i'm not used to any open now i'm seeing all those differences so i'm kind of uh you know enjoying that yeah yeah it's uh i agree with i think you said a lot of good things here and i generally agree and uh, for me, from my perspective, even though I did see it years ago, it's nice to revisit it and kind of look at it now and still be able to appreciate it like I do every week. Uh, you guys are always telling me, why are you surprised that it's good? And it's not that I'm surprised that it's good, but it's still nice to see that after all these years, uh, with even with so many changes and so many more tools that uh, TV show makers have today, and even budgets and different things, uh, this still holds up in terms of quality. Uh, especially when it comes to the writing and the acting and the storytelling. Uh, it, it does what it needs to do, and it's still a great show to watch, in my opinion, of course. And I guess uh, next next we have Sean. How did you feel about this episode? Uh, I didn't hate that previous episode that Ro mentioned where he was a female. <laughs> I just... It's, it's terribly awkward, and I, I'm, it's not my favorite. It's a very, like, clever get Sam out of his comfort zone type of uh, scenario when they <laughs> last week when he showed up and was a woman again I was like ah oh, are we just gonna do this again uh, I I was pleasantly surprised that they did not really focus on his having to deal with it and then it was more story based sorry I ha <laughs> Nick looks weird in my window so I have him on the the live stream and he's like reacting weird and delayed so it's distracting me um i was pleasantly surprised and and how they 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 handled the whole episode the one thing I, I i'm still trying to get through the the last stream you guys did for the last episode listening to it i don't know if you touched on it um this one did a similar thing and i feel like last week's episode which is why i liked it so much um it seemed that St uh, Stam, Sam caused the problem that he's there to prevent. And uh, they did that last week with him going on the, the cherry bomb in the toilet thing. And then that inspires the girl to blow up the lab. I thought that was brilliant because I don't remember them really doing the writing like that. Like usually it's pretty clearly defined what Sam's there to do and prevent. And it's going to happen anyway. So the fact that both of these episodes, he inadvertently causes the problem, I thought was brilliant for for both episodes. And uh, yeah, I, and he, I, he, I liked he it. He does it in a way that you think it could have happened that way originally. You know, he's yeah. following, oh, this is the path to stop this. Mm -hmm. And and then he it ends could up have happened that way. But the only reason why he's able to solve it is because he knows what the end result is. Yeah, I, they didn't really do that previously, right? Like, I feel like these last two episodes, that's been a unique new twist to the writing on these episodes, which I like. <laughs> I'm still mad I had to miss last week. I gotta go to your brother-in-law's wedding. 
<laughs> uh, it's okay, man. It happens. It. Uh, I like that one a lot. I, despite all the, the the cheesiness. This, but yeah, like both these episodes, I really like that they tried something new with the problem. I will say that one thing, whether you like an episode more or less, one thing I'll say is this show isn't, even at this point, isn't afraid to try different things. Yeah. Uh, so, so many yeah. shows are stale that you watch them and then the next week you watch them again and you watch them again. And they're sort of always covering the same ground. It's rare that a show that has uh, elements of science fiction and even your time travel and things like that has that kind of world building that it has its rules that it's building, but you also uh, see so many different setups and so many different situations. And I feel like the, the, the writing here and the producing and everything, they're just, they're, they're, it's creative. It's creative and it, it, it's, it's daring and it's different. And uh, for it, it's cool even looking at it today. But I think that when it came out, I, I always, I've said this probably several times, I don't know of another show that was on like this on network television during the time that was airing. Uh, if you like science fiction, if you like time travel, if you like things like that, you weren't getting anything like this except for this show. And it was doing it really well, in my opinion, especially for a network show. Uh, One additional thing that I, I <laughs> it was like it, it flashed back into my brain because I used to watch these in like you know, 95 on sci fi channel as reruns. And I would just randomly watch episodes. Uh, one of the one of my first experiences with this show was turning it on and having no clue what's going on, and Sam is just there to solve a problem and then trying to figure out what he's there to solve. It was kind of like a meta way of watching the show, where it's like, wow, <laughs> I just le leapt into this show and suddenly I have to solve the problem. I think um, we need to do shots, though. They they mentioned Babylon Five, which is uh, uh, yeah, that always has to happen at least once during a stream. Yeah, it's yeah. just that if you miss him leaping in or leaping out, you're like, what is happening in this show? It's but you true. Can still yeah. pick up on what's going on. So it's, I always like that show for that reason. It's true, but I I also it's interesting that you should say that. I think that the fact that they already added this narrator and they're trying to create some kind of opening that's stable and explains what happens each time is because they really want to lure new viewers into it. Oh and, yeah, totally. Yeah. And, and I think but if you that missed good... that, you're like, oh, he's he's suddenly in the south right. and everyone's treating him like a black man. Like... <laughs> right. <laughs> there is so so many weird things here. If you don't know what, the, if you have no context as to what you're looking, just like you said, if you have no context and you don't you don't understand what you're looking at. Really doesn't make much sense. That mm -hmm. opening narration is very very important. Uh, interesting. It's the only time we'll hear that man narrating it. So. Mm. It, this is really, really an anomaly episode, but it's cool even to see the development. Nick, how did you feel about this episode? Um, I'm going to start with that point. Um, it kind of felt weird because somehow if it was a woman, I wouldn't feel this way. But because it was a man and it wasn't Al or Sam, it kind of felt weird. Like, who's this guy? Is this Ziggy? Who, who, who's, who's this guy narrating? If it's a mm. woman, then it's like, oh, okay, well, you know, I, I don't know why they oh they wanted the softer touch or something. Well, when it's a guy, it's like why isn't it one of the guys? It's one of the main people of the show doing it. But uh, I I like this episode a lot. I, I uh, one of the things I kind of appreciated is I was hoping to get back um, to this. I the the episodes that are kind of a theme are fun, and I I kind of mentioned that like we've had like. Oh, it was the frat party, and then it was the ghosts, and then it was the um, the theater Man. crew. You know, those are fun when they're – but it was like it seemed like we were getting that back to back to back to back, and it was just kind of nice to just kind of – oh, these are these are ordinary people. They're not living some extraordinary life. Um, it's just an everyday situation. So that was kind of nice to get back to. And then when it came to – doing the second time being in a female, I think uh, they did it really well because the first time they, they tackled kind of like, you know, sexism in the workplace, you know, she's a kind of the, the hot secretary or, or is what Sam was playing. And uh, which kind of seemed fitting for the first time he went into a, a woman that would seem like kind of the, 
it almost writes itself, you know, oh, he's a woman now and people are giving him cat calls and stuff like that. If this was, but then, you know, I think a big part of the, you know, saying this is we're all guys on this panel. Sorry, we didn't, we didn't get a girl on for this, but, uh, you know, big part of the female experience, you know, being a mother and just that stress and any guy who has had to fill in, uh, you know, mom's sick or mom went on vacation. And so you got to step up as the dad and play Mr. Mom. Um, there is, there is a lot to it when, you know, you're trying to cook and you're trying to do this. And then the kid is getting into a mess and, and all these other things. Plus you have your regular job and you got it. It, 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 it's always something good that any, any dad needs to do at some point to fully appreciate his wife. Right. Uh, I, I agree. Uh, I mean, I don't have the knowledge that you have, but I understand what you're saying. And, uh, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely interesting to see Sam arrive in the role of the mother. And actually he's telling Al how much he has to do as the mother and what kind of schedule she has. And I thought I thought that was nice. I mean, today you have all these things, and uh, actually, I think it was Tex that said, "Oh, today there would be some, if there was a leap into all, there would be some kind of woke diatribe or something like that." But here, I think it's done uh, very su- very subtly that he's just looking at the list and he's like, "Man, this, this mom is doing a ton of stuff," and it's sort of a little appreciation to mothers that actually uh, the type of work they have to do with the kids that sometimes maybe goes unnoticed or unappreciated. And I thought that was a nice nuanced way of addressing it, but without shoving any kind of weird messages or whatever down anybody's throats, it was kind of done nonchalantly. Yeah. I also like the Sam's already been in this situation and he's learned from that past experience. So we don't have to readdress. So he has to learn to walk in heels or Mm -hmm. deal with pantyhose or something. He's just, He's he is he's just owning there. that dress. Yeah. He's walking around and pacing, trying to worry about this kid. Um, yeah, Lisa Katrine says yeah. Sam was overwhelmed with her schedule. I right. didn't actually yeah. see the comment until now. I don't know. I, she probably said it before I said it. And then uh, Tex Rogers says that the show it is subtle, and uh, I don't know. Ronda Nefaro is talking about uh, some Voyager. show called Voyagers. Not familiar with that show, but uh, I guess I have to check that out. Uh, I'll do that along with uh, Babylon 5 at some point when I find time for those. Uh, they seem like good shows. In I any like case, how quickly um, Sam channels in the beginning there, um, the mom, because it is one of those situations, um, you know, moms have a lot of patience, There's and they have to, you know, uh, kids are nagging they're pecking at each other these things happen you have to have that but uh i love that um she just does the he he throws things down and he says this is it this is Mm -hmm. no more and that that is totally a mom move (laughs) totally well, I guess quickly, I just want to acknowledge it, just say again hello and make sure I saw everybody in the chat, whether it's Tex Rogers, Malachi D. Wildman, Ron Donofaro, uh, Lisa, we had Lisa Katrian here. Uh, we have, uh, we actually had people come uh, pop in here and I want to make sure I acknowledge them. Uh, just get Kaiwan Calendar, thanks for stopping by. And uh, Matthew McGee, good to see you here again. And then we had uh, Tim's Talk, nice to see you again also. Ishmael, of course. Emperor's and... NM. Mm-hmm. What'd you say? Emperor's NM. Marks for Seven, of course. Uh, which We got a latecomer, Marla Sharendoff. Hi, Marla. Oh, okay. That's that's good to hear. No uh, Super Mario Three yet, though. Oh yeah. Empress NM. Uh, nice to see you. Nice. To, I I feel like I've seen you before, but. And then we had the minister. Uh, 
minister, I think his name was Minister Kenneth Espinoza, mm -hmm. kind of came and went. Uh, hope to see him again. And then uh, the Wolfram Heart, nice to see you. Marla, Marla Charandoff, nice to meet you. Marla Charandoff, I feel like we've met before. I feel like you've watched maybe my uh, my reviews on my main channel. I uh, used to have sort of a photographic memory. These days it's uh, sometimes a memory. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't say it's photographic anymore, but I feel like Marla Charandoff, I've uh, met you before. Yes, we have, right? Uh, it was, uh, see, I, I remembered it. We, I used to put my quantum leap uh, the new quantum leap videos on my main channel and i'd premiere them and at least once at least once we had a conversation during a, when when i uh, presented it live and uh i believe we had a nice conversation so it's nice to see you here i'm happy you found my live channel hope you're subscribed and you should definitely uh stop by more because i know you like quantum leap so it's good to see you here with my vague impression memory now. <laughs> Lisa Catrine wants to know Lisa if you're pronouncing Katrine, her name Ryan. correctly. Are you pronouncing <laughs> her name correctly? Ch Charindoff, Chara Charadov. Uh, Marla Charindoff. Did I say your name correctly? Well, love it. I hope love it. She meant oh, love the way Mario I'm pronouncing <laughs> Super Mario Brothers 3 makes oh. his grand entrance. Grand yes. entrance. The big SMB3 has arrived. And uh, yeah, we're just, you know, I, I think I can also speak for the other guys here. Really grateful for the nice amount, uh, nice amount of people and also the, the, the quality of the people that we see here in this chat every week and more people finding about the, out about this show. And... Uh, it, it really adds to, to our fun because we're talking about it and then you guys have such great comments and it's nice that you guys are enjoying it too. So it's, it feels like a get together that we're really celebrating this show, which is, which is what we always wanted it to be. So in that sense, I'm really happy. Uh, I guess I'm just going to go one by one now. Ro, do you have anything you want to plug? No, just, uh, you know, if you're uh, into deep dives and uh, some adult-type conversations uh, having to do with sci-fi and no yelling and no blaming anybody, come on over to the Scare of Scuttlebutt podcast, available on Podcatchers Everywhere, part of the Red 5 Network. You can catch the rest of our Red 5 Network peeps at bio.link slash red5. But give us a follow. I uh, second that motion. And then we have the real Sean Crummel. Sean, is there anything you want to plug? Um, just the YouTube channel, trying to figure out what the heck to draw for the next video. Uh, if you want stickers, real Sean Crummel art dot Etsy dot com, but on all your laptops. And uh, right now we're just working on trying to print chapter one of my comic series, Smack Them Ahead, the animated series. Uh, as probably a giveaway for a free comic book day. So if you're in Winter Garden, Florida, and uh, end up at Crumbs World Comics and Collectibles on uh, free comic book day, hopefully we'll have something for you. So uh, Marla Sharandoff says, My sister is an actress and changed the pronunciation of our name, so it's rare to hear it right. She's now known as Tara Strong. To be honest, Thank I you. remembered this from our conversation. I didn't say it because I didn't, I, you know, it's up to you uh, what you want to share. But since you shared it, I figured uh, it's not a secret. But I actually remember us having this conversation. That's so, cool. She's the voice of like every cartoon I've watched. Right, before. right. She has such a great resume of, of cartoons and things like yeah. that. And uh, cool stuff. And uh, I. I'm going to take this as a strange backhanded compliment, and I'll say why. Uh, th this is really some mental gymnastics here, but it seems like Marla has a has had uh, has been exposed to talent throughout her life, and she recognizes what talent looks like. So if she enjoys watching Quantum Leap revisited, 
<laughs> Credit to you, Price. Credit to you. No, yeah, dude, I got a gold us. medal for those gymnastics that you're performing. <laughs> <laughs> the credit to all of us. Credit to all of us. <laughs> but but I'm just joking, Marla. In any case, what I'm trying to say is we're very happy that you're here. And uh, thanks for joining us. We, we hope to see more of you here uh, now that you've uh, found the live channel. It's a very funny joke, too. I appreciate it. She changed <laughs> the pronunciation of our name. <laughs> Uh, in in any case, uh, oh, Ron's got a good idea. Sean, what, draw, what up a, draw, draw up a sticker for plot hole. Yeah, you guys said that like a couple of weeks ago. Totally, I was I was totally gonna make a T-shirt. I should. I'm just well, gonna what, make your. What does that even look like? It's just a black circle with the word plot hole on it. Yeah. Well, are, are we just gonna like? Not notice the the huge name drop of Tara Strong. <laughs> We oh, we, no. we acknowledged it. Yeah, we, we noticed. No, we acknowledged it. I hope we didn't chase Marla away ever since I shared that thing as she's gone. I hope like that wasn't the end of Marla. But uh, we we were very happy to see you here. And I figured if it was shared in a comment, it wasn't a secret. But uh, in any case, uh, great to see you here and hope to see you again. And uh, Nick, do you have anything you want to plug before we go? Just my uh, adventures in locksmithing. Been having fun. Um, I've had. Uh, I I always record these, and I'm always like backlogged ahead. But I do have some fun ones coming up. Some, uh, uh, well, uh, w what I describe fun, but some some really bad houses. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, it seems like you have your hands full with your stuff, but uh, it's it's always good. I've been watching your videos, and I really enjoy the Adventures in Locksmithing channel. I feel like uh, over time, more people are going to see it and just enjoy. Uh, I, I think people that see the channel don't quite know what it is they're going to see, but since I know, I actually like it. But I don't really know how you can explain to people what it is that you're going to be showing them unless they watch it, I guess. Ah, oh, we lost him. His his uh, battery died. Oh, oh yeah. his battery died. He'll yeah. be back on his phone in a minute. He's he's gonna be back in a second. But uh, I'll just say quickly, he has the channel Adventures in Lock, Adventures in Locksmithing, where he's on the job. Uh, sometimes he goes to places that are kind of uh, sketchy. Sketchy. Maybe the police have decided that there's something wrong with that location. Uh, they need access to the place. Uh, he usually goes in them. Sometimes he's allowed to also document it uh, and even share it. And uh, at times there's some pretty crazy stuff going on there. So that's always interesting to see. Sometimes it's just between jobs. He runs into a lot of strange people. Uh, he kind of t tells you about his day and the type of work he's doing. And uh, he's just a great guy. And and I... Uh, I mean, if he if he were here, he could elaborate more. But uh, <laughs> since he's not, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be Nick, and uh, the Backyard Tardis is his pop culture uh, channel where he does videos and talks about a lot of stuff. So that's good too. And uh, yeah, I, I feel like he may be trying to turn on his computer, but uh, we can wait another few seconds to see if he pops back in. But otherwise, I think we're probably just gonna. Uh, Okay, my laptop just died, but great stream. Okay, he said it. That's his official goodbye. And I guess at this point, and for those of you who are new, uh, this is a song. This is the outro. Most of you know it. This is the outro, official outro to our uh, broadcast. Uh, the outro is a song. Uh, again, not to toot my own horn here, but I... <laughs> <laughs> I toot actually it, toot it, toot toot it. it. I actually I I wrote it, I sing it, and I play all the instruments. And the uh, all things considered, considering that it's a it's a outro song to a live stream, I think it's pretty decent. So we're gonna see it now and we'll be on our way. Thanks, guys. We'll see you all here next week. And good night. I'm such an awesome guy.